All right, y'all, I'm back again, early morning video. Um, I just want to touch on uh, the Warriors and Lonzo, because I said I was going to do a little bit more in-depth with them. And <clears throat> I'm not, I'm going to touch on, you know, contract situation a little bit, uh, and mainly the starters. I'm not going to get into the bench. You know, I'm also going to touch on Clay and Kerr, but, I'm, you, you know, this isn't going to be one of those where I go down the list and talk about every single player on the roster, no. I'm just going to talk about a couple of key points of interest and um, go from there. So, you know, the trade proposed is basically Lonzo for Uber straight up, essentially. That's all I've seen. Um, let's start here. Keep in mind, guys, there was a statement made by LeVar Ball a couple of years ago where he said Kerr was the nilly vanilli of coaches. And um, Kerr probably ain't forgot that shit. <laughs> um, now, Kerr has been abused by Michael Jordan, <laughs> so he's probably a little bit thick-skinned, tough-shelled right now, so I don't think he'd be so sensitive as to let that get in the way of winning. Um, but it's possible he could do that to be petty. Uh, I just want to start the video out with that. You know, keep in mind that that may be a train of thought, especially because right now LeVar don't have the mic in front of him. But, you know, there's going to be, you know, if I can bring this back up to you guys, think about what the media can do. Hey, what do you think about Steve Kerr? You know, you did make some pretty harsh comments. And, you know, LeVar might go off and say some things, yada, yada, yada. So that's going to be something to look for down the line when it comes to Lonzo, especially in a contract year where he's trying to get paid. And people are going to be like, well, here's LeVar again popping up. And do we really want to do business with with Lonzo despite the fact that, you know, LeVar is talking shit again? So, you know, that's something I want you guys to think about and keep in mind. All right, number two, the next thing is Steve Kerr's offense. Uh Steve Kerr runs a very complicated offense, and it's not easy to defend. Uh, it's a very hard offense to guard, and there's a lot of off-ball movement. And um, and so I think this will do good for Zoe in the half court. Uh, full court in transition, the, the Warriors were always a good team. They were always a solid team. Whoever had the ball just pushed it up, and you just give it to Clay, you give it to... Um, KD when he was there, give it to uh, uh, Steph, uh, Harrison Barnes, Iguodala, all kinds of players all over the court that could shoot. You know, just go in and find the open shooter because they're going to sprint to where they need to be and you get the ball to them. Someone like Lonzo will benefit from that because Lonzo could just straight up hit the basket or he can find an open shooter in transition. He knows what to do. And playing with vets that understand this will be a boon to him and his success in transition he'll you know they'll he'll fit right in with their transition scheme now in the half court i think he'll be better because of the off ball movement and the thing is and it into you know i guess put a uh, a hash or uh, i can't remember what it's called but a slash right there this is one of the fit issues i have right <clears throat> now Draymond Green is basically Lonzo Ball, just bulkier. They're the same height, Draymond's 6'6", um, even though Draymond plays power forward or center, depending on the lineup, and you got Lonzo, who's 6'6", a lot skinnier, uh, not as bulky, basically, and they pretty much have the same or similar skill set. The exception is Lonzo is more willing to take mid-range jump shots and he's, I'm not going to say he's a better shooter necessarily because percentage-wise, he definitely ain't this year. They're around the same level, um, even though I think his peak for shooting so far has been higher than Dre's. So that's something to keep an eye on. But in the mid-range, I don't think there's any question Lonzo's a better shooter. Um, but they overlap a lot. Um, the only thing is, even though... L Dre can play in the high post out of and pass out of the high post, but he likes to sit at the top of the key to pass, right? My question with this is, what do you do with those two on the court? I mean, they both are playmakers, you know, um, 
And truth be told, Draymond hasn't had to play with another playmaker on this team. So how does he fit in? You know, if you play Draymond on the ball, you can kind of move Lonzo around and everything, and that makes the most sense, I think. But what about when Lonzo's on the ball? How do you make use of Draymond? That's my question. Uh, I'm not quite sure with that. I, the, that's, I really think... I think Draymond would get more run as the ball handler with Steph just out of experience. And I think Lonzo would have more ball handling duties when it's uh, him and Wiseman on the court. Uh, <clears throat> because Lonzo knows how to use pieces and they got shooters obviously on that team. But, you know, like I said, Wiseman got benched a little while ago. And my thing is with Lonzo, I think Lonzo helped put him in a position to succeed. But the problem is, okay, like I can see Drake, like it, it seemed it would be better to me if you're going to have him off ball. You know, Lonzo off ball playing next to Wiggins and Steph with Dre on the ball because Dre really just don't provide much offensive utility. So that's something I would look at with, you know, concern. And it was one of the first things that popped up in my head. Uh, you know, I was just like, they're basically the same player, just slightly different. I think Lonzo's probably the better mid-range scorer. Actually, I know he is. Uh, they're both atrocious for three right now. But, again, I predict that to trend up for Zoe. Uh, and, you know, power forward is what Dre plays and Lonzo plays point guard. It, it, to me, it's just a little too – I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, but I think – in the lineups, like the start lineups, you're going to see a lot more Dre with the ball in the half court and Lonzo moving off bars, balls, set pin downs and picks and stuff for Wiggins and uh, Steph. I think he'd be more utility guy in the starting lineup with mixed with some uh, half court offensive responsibilities and he'd be point guard in the second unit because he would have all the playmaking responsibilities. And especially next to Wiseman, he could elevate Wiseman's game to help you know, get him better looks or Kavon Loon. Um, <clears throat> so that's something I would look at. Um, <clears throat> as far as the starters are concerned, I think defensively they had a potential to be really good. Uh, even if even if they take Wiseman out and you keep Loon here, you take Loon out and keep Wiseman. Draymond, Lonzo, Wiggins is pretty freaking solid uh, defensively. When they get Clay back, you know, even better if they kept Lonzo. Um, I imagine they put Clay at small forward, though. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, like, that to me, that that has the makers of a pretty solid defensive team, pretty solid defensive core. Uh, but, and damn, that's the other thing I just thought about. When Clay comes back, you got Lonzo. I mean, somebody's got to go to the bench. Somebody, you know, between Lonzo, Clay, Wiggins, Steph, Draymond, and Wiseman, somebody has to go to the bench. And if you place, if you play Draymond at center, you're going to be undersized all game for the most part. Um, if you send Wiggins to the bench, that's a lot of money going to the bench first off. But, you know, he, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. He's like your second best offensive player, right? Steph ain't going to the bench. Clay ain't going to the bench. Okay, so is Lonzo going to the bench? Because Lonzo is probably your best combination of everything. He's Draymond Green probably with better overall offensive game <laughs> in general. And so to me, it's like, okay, well, if that's not him, what about Wiseman? Wiseman's already on the bench right now. Is he going to stay on the bench? That's what, the number two pick? And he's not bad. He's not a bad player at all. But, you know, you know what's the status of that? That's if Lonzo is re-signed to this team. Um, now, if he leaves, obviously, forget what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. Go out the window. But, you know, that's a little stuff you got to think about. But Lonzo, Clay, and Steph, let's just talk about those three alone real quick, just in isolation. 
you're giving Lonzo the two greatest shooters of all time and probably the two greatest off-ball movers in league history. And all Lonzo has to do is hit them square in the pocket for their shot. Lonzo, for a while, was averaging nine assists under Gentry with Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, to which he was getting three assists a game off of freaking Zion. Can you imagine how many assists Lonzo is going to rack up as the primary point guard with Clay and Steph off ball moving together? They got to account for five to six assists alone. That's not even counting the assists he would get for Looney, uh, Wiggins, uh, Wiseman, like, I uh, can't remember, Pascal, uh, you know, I think, what's the other guy's name? Wanamaker, I think is his name. I could be wrong. Uh, if I got the wrong guy's name, whatever, forgive me. I can't remember the dude's name. But, you know, there's so many. Matter of fact, let me see. Is my iPad? Nope, my iPad's dead. All right, my iPad was on. I was going to search it. But, you know, it's it's he's going to get so many assists on that team with both of them if he stays. Think about this. Even if Lonzo, like to me, and I said in a video earlier this year, I said Lonzo to me is one of those guys I think right now the expected, he should expect to hit 14, 13, 14 a game at this point. Uh, if he's going to get 13, 14 a game, he's going to get around 10 assists. 14 and 10, 13 and 10, and then his rebounding, 6, 7 rebounds, 14, 10 and 6, 14, 10 and 7, plus the defense. Like, I want you guys to think about this number-wise next year if he's – like, let's just say Golden State underpays him. Let's say he gets like 15, 18 million a year, right? You're giving, you're telling me you're going to have Steph Curry getting 20 plus, 30 a game. Klay Thompson getting 20 plus. And then you got Lonzo giving you 14, 10. And then you got Wiseman improving. improving. Then you got Wiggins who's going to give you like 18 to 20. Like, I'm just just off of those four guys alone. I could say you can get two and a half assists a game off of each of those four guys by themselves. That's not even counting what they what he could get from the bench guys too. Like Lonzo is going to have one of those really good assist years that is going to go under the radar, and he would reinvent himself. Well, not really reinvent himself, but he would revive his career so much on the Warriors just for the simple fact that he's got all-time great shooters who can actually knock down the shots that he gives to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's going to he's gonna get the ball. You know, I know I said this, him and Draymond, he's going to get the ball with those guys. And in transition, he's going to get the ball. You know, there, there's no question he's going to get the ball in transition. And especially with people that can leak out, because now you add a whole other dimension. Uh, the, the, the Warriors have never had a guy who could throw full court lobs or full court bombs to people into their spots. You now got, as soon as Lonzo gets the ball, everybody is gone. And here's the problem that defenses are going to have to deal with. It used to be, okay, we got to find Steph and Clay. Now it's, it don't matter who the hell is on the court because Lonzo is going to find them full court. If Draymond gets to the basket, he's going to shoot the ball to where Draymond can get it, and Draymond's going to be in, in range of an and one, or at least a full a dunk. Wiseman and, and running the court too, plus Steph and Clay. there is literally not a spot on the court that is safe in transition. In transition, you used to be like, okay, you know, we got to take away, we got to try to take away the paint if we can, but uh, normal teams, but on this team, we got to take away Steph and Clay at the three-point line. That doesn't exist anymore. There is not a spot on the court where there's a threat in transition that he can't hit, right? <clears throat> now, that helps because now you have to be wary of everybody. Steph might not get so much attention in transition with Lonzo there because now you got to focus. See, this is where Lonzo elevate Steph and everybody else's game because there's if there's nothing else the entire league knows when Lonzo is in, tra in transition watch your ass they will put he's going to put so much pressure on teams because it's like okay who do we stop in transition Lonzo or Steph or Lonzo or Clay you know or Lonzo or Wiseman because Wiseman's going to run the floor with Lonzo you know <clears throat> he's going to 
assault like the offense of that team is going to be ridiculous once Clay comes back. They'll be very good this year without him because they still have Wiggins to help with Steph. But when Clay comes back, if they keep Lonzo, there is not going to be an answer for that team in transition. And, but the problem is Steph and them are getting older. And Clay coming off an injury, they're not going to be as young to want to run. So I expect them to try to get younger on that roster overall. But I got to tell you, man, like that is basketball pornography. When you think about the options Lonzo would have on that floor. And when you think, okay, now teams, you know, they're doubling or trying to take Steph out of it right now. Just because Clay's not there. When Clay's not there, they're going to have to give attention to Clay. But it's even worse now because it's like, damn, who do we do we let Lonzo get wide open shots at the basket now? You know, what, what do we do? You know, it, it, and at worst, even if he doesn't do the, the long range, he gets the hockey assist. Oh, let me push it to Draymond. Draymond had, knows where to hit the guys. Bam. You know, easy work. It, it's it's it, That team is going to be ridiculous in transition and in the half court you got so much floor spacing in my other video i was talking about lonzo ball, lonzo ball's game well when you break this down this way all that spacing that those guys are going to give you plus wiggins he's going to have mid-range he's going to have a mid-range fest the entire freaking game and there's going to be spots he could pick on the floor based on where steph is going if steph is going from the right to the left the gravity of the defense is going to go with Steph. That means he's got more to work with on the right side of the court. And it depends also where Clay is because they could put them on the same side of the court. And now this defense shifts. And if you get into a two man situation with, say, Wiggins, I mean, not Wiggins, with Lonzo and Wiseman, and Wiseman looks like he's going to have some range. He looked like he may be able to shoot three soon. If he can legit shoot threes and you got pick and pop a pick and roll situation with Wiseman and Lonzo, and then you got, you know, Steph and Clay on the other side ready for the kickout pass, you're gonna like Lonzo is gonna look dangerous on this team. And this is why I did a lot of talking about, you know, who his teammates are. With the right weapons, Lonzo is going to look like UCLA Lonzo on steroids because he now has the mid-range game and he's comfortable taking that shot. The the Pels don't have the floor spacing, and they don't play Lonzo to where to Lonzo's strengths. Number one, let's they don't play him to his strengths. We all know that. Let's put that to the side. Even if they could play him to his strengths, they don't have the floor spacing to make him a ruthless weapon. You know, they basically. It's like you ever watch one of those animes or something and everybody's trying to get this like almighty, all powerful sword because it's supposed to have like these ridiculous hacks or stack abilities and shit. They're basically, it's like having that weapon but choosing never to use it. That's what Lonzo is on the Pels. On the Warriors, I think it'll be a different situation. And I would expect his confidence to shoot up on that team and with confidence is going to come more efficiency from his side. You know, his. I think he'll actually start having good shooting percentages. I think on the Warriors, it would be a nice turnaround for his career. I'm not expecting that this year just yet because I think they would need Clay and they would have to find some way to get Lonzo back. But the next year, if they have Clay, I would like to see what that roster looks like, um, especially on the bench. That'll tell me a whole lot. But just the starters itself, that's a lot to work with. Now, this year, <clears throat> um, I like Wiggins. I've always liked Wiggins. I always thought Wiggins got a bad rep. But uh, I like Wiggins, okay? Uh, I think because Wiggins is athletic and he can score all over the court. Uh, that's basically Brandon Ingram like, okay? If he can play with if he can play with Brandon Ingram, he can play with Wiggins. So to me, he'll make that work. They'll figure it out. Um, Steph just has to be Steph. Lonzo, the, long, the the learning curve for Lonzo is going to be the offense and the options, right? Because you can't play. The Warriors half court set is different for, and unique from any other team in the league. There's going to be a little bit of learning curve for Lonzo in his offense. Now, I think playing under Lavar has helped him somewhat because some of the same thought processes 
are there even if they're under different names or different uh, titles. You know, some of it, it basically to me, I basically look at the Warriors offense like transition in the half court. They're, they're half court transition team because of all the moving and stuff. So I think there may be, even though there's a learning curve, I think Lonzo plus his experience and his IQ is smart enough to, you know, figure it out very quickly. Um, <clears throat> defensively, though, I want to talk about this. Lonzo, you know, Steph has to play defense this year with Lonzo. I mean, they had Kelly Oubre, obviously, but with Lonzo, you could put Steph on. Like I said, I think Lonzo's comparable enough to Clay on defense, if not better in some cases. Clay is, I think Lonzo's a better one on one defender than Clay, and I think he's actually a better team defender than Clay. Um, some people would disagree with that, that's okay. Uh, but the thing is, he's so comparable enough to Clay that he can do so much on the court. Now, what I'm interested in is the defensive core of him and Draymond because I think those two's ability to switch all over the court and defensive IQ and motor, <clears throat> it's going to lead to a lot of fast break transition buckets for that team. You know, Draymond's going to crash the, the boards. Lonzo, I expect to crash the boards. So I would expect to see, you know, between the defensive switches and the turnovers they get, I expect to see the, the Warriors offense take off. And the defensive rating should improve too. What I don't like about this team is four, fourth quarters. Uh, I'm not sure what Wiggins shoots uh, free throws, but I don't like Lonzo at the free throw line just yet, even though I think he'll improve if he gets there more and more this season. Draymond, I don't like. Uh, he's he's just not a three, he's not a shooter in in any regard to me. Um, so that's something that's going to be of note to watch. Uh, I don't think Kevon Looney is a good shooter, and I haven't seen enough of Wiseman like that to say either. So that may be an area of concern is clutch situations. But as we've seen, Lonzo in a clutch, pretty good, pretty consistent. He's pretty. Been uh, pretty consistent his entire career. Um, let me make sure I touch on everything. I touched on his passing. I touched on his shooting and scoring. I believe uh, rebounding. I didn't touch too much on that. They, so they got Wiseman. They got Looney. They got Draymond. And now they got if well I'm gonna not say now because the trade hasn't happened, but they can get Lonzo. You got some of the best rebounder you're gonna get in the league just off of that. Okay. Um again, if they with the, that's gonna play a role to me as long as their defense is solid. If you force early shots that aren't good shots and Lonzo can get the ball, <laughs> touchdown. So, <clears throat> I expect if he doesn't get the rebound, if I'm Kurt, I'm putting Lonzo um, on the boards. I need Lonzo's. I need Lonzo crashing the boards, especially if we're playing Draymond. We we need Lonzo on the board so that he can get the ball and make the necessary read to get Steph an easier shot. Getting Steph easier shots is the name of the game this year. Uh, he's shooting thirty seven percent, but he's catching like. Like like OG Ricky says, shout out to OG Ricky. You know, if you guys don't follow OG Ricky on Twitter, please do. The guy is a basketball savant with knowledge. He's got a wealth of knowledge and, and experience. But the name the name of the game is Ten Eyes. They're playing Ten Eyes on Steph at all times, right? With Lonzo, especially in transition, that's not going to happen. But it also allows you, you can have some lineups where you take Draymond out and you can play Wiseman, and you can put somebody else in there off the bench that can space the floor, and now you got weapons everywhere on the court, and now it's just like pick your poison because you got to guard Steph moving. You got to guard Wiggins. If you got Wiseman in for Draymond, and let's just say you got another shooter off the bench, well, guess what? Where Like, who can you keep up with? Because Lonzo's going to find his match. And even if he, let's just say he takes Steph out of the game, like in, like as far as options, like don't don't hit Steph, hit everybody else. Lonzo goes down, pick and roll, he gets Wiseman. Lonzo goes down, pick and roll, he doesn't get Wiseman, but he gets a mid-range. Lonzo goes down, he gets pick and roll, they hedge, but he sees Wiggins, 
cutting. He gets Wiggins the shot. Now you got to call timeout because you just got a 6-0 run. And you got Lonzo tearing up your team, and he can't even. And it's not even Steph that's killing you. Steph gets to rest on offense, which means he's fresher for the rest of the game, right? Now they're gonna put more pressure to get Lonzo um, off the ball. Steph can handle ball duties too. You can move Lonzo around on the court. I think similarly to Steph, and I think he will benefit, like I said in my other video, by you know being able to shoot it with no hesitation. And I think it would get him the best looks of his career, which he may have a huge uptick. I thought he was going to shoot 40% from three. It is completely possible to me that, in theory, on this team, if they move him off the ball some, like they play Steph and have him go running around the court to get shots, he is going to make his jump shooting will improve tremendously. And so, to me, that's another place where I think Lonzo's value or presence is going to help out this team. Because, okay, like I said, you could put Draymond on a bench. Basically, you're not putting Draymond on a bench and replacing him with a shooter. You're putting Draymond on a bench and replacing him with Lonzo, who's already in the game. Lonzo's just going to take over his role, and Lonzo's got younger legs. He's just as smart IQ-wise, and Lonzo's not afraid to take a shot, uh, which is the one thing that teams are going to have to worry about. And the Warriors, here's the other thing, and I'm going to leave it with this. The Warriors move the ball. They share the ball a lot. One of the problems Lonzo has consistently had in his career is the lack of people who can't get him the ball when he's cutting or making the right appropriate read. That has happened with everybody except when LeBron was there. When LeBron's there, LeBron consistently found Lonzo. In Golden State, I think he is going to be in a situation where if he makes a cut, we're not going to have too many games where we're sitting there like, oh, they didn't find him. If he's making a cut, Draymond will find him, or Steph is going to find him. Somebody is going to find Lonzo cutting for easy basket. He's going to get to the free throw line, I think, on this team a lot more because of it, because they're going to have to foul him. They're going to have to foul him to put him on the free throw line. Lonzo Ball, if you're listening to this, man, I don't care what you do. During your free time, I know you like to rap. Bruh, go go hit free throws like every free second that you have because you are going to get them. And if you can hit your free throws, you are now officially a complete player. This is your boy Jay Strokes, early morning video. I hope y'all have a good one. Peace.